Over the last few months, I have uh, spent a lot of time reading, listening, watching, learning about artificial intelligence and the huge transformation that is going to go on in the way that we work and the way that we live our lives. And uh, over the next few series of videos, I want to just cover a couple of those books and just give you a very brief summary and hopefully inspire you to go and buy these books and to read them or listen to them if you're an audiobook fan. And the first of these books that I really recommend, and probably the best place to start, in my opinion, is called Co-Intelligence by Ethan Mollick. Uh, now, Ethan is a professor at Wharton uh, in the US, and he writes and talks uh, all about uh, the world of artificial intelligence and how it is about to change our uh, lives and the way that we engage with each other. And uh, the book is a really easy read, and I'm going to split it down into two uh, core sections, which is what is in the book. Uh, the first is about these four rules of co-intelligence. And when we think about co-intelligence, we're thinking about the machines as uh, cooperators in the way that we're going to work. And so these four rules of co-intelligence, uh, number one, always invite AI to the party, to the discussion. Wherever you are doing any work today, whether that is some creative work, whether it is planning a project, whether it is choosing uh, what vendor you're going to work with, think about how you can introduce some element of AI to that process. Uh, maybe that is using AI to define an agenda for a meeting. Maybe it is asking AI to summarize the notes from a particular uh, document that you've received. But the more that you figure out how to introduce AI and engage with it, the more you're going to learn about how that can have implications further on in your business. The second rule of co-intelligence is about making sure that you are the human in the loop. And what this phrase means is that it's too easy to take what you get from AI and to the uninitiated to think that that is a truthful and honest answer. But artificial intelligence is so keen to please you. It's like a little puppy dog that wants to give you an answer, even if it doesn't know an answer. And so it will make a very compelling case for telling you why something is something, even though it may not actually have that knowledge in its training data. So wherever you are taking content out of AI, you need to be able to sanitize that as a human. And the way that I think about this is treating AI as a member of the team that is providing me with some input that I will then uh, digest and consolidate and then turn into my own human uh, writing or output. So number one, always introduce AI to your, uh, to your uh, meetings and your processes. Number two, take everything uh, that it says with a pinch of salt to avoid any hallucinations. The third, and this is what I really love uh, in this book from uh, Ethan, is about treating AI like a human. And I love it because it's exactly how I was behaving anyway. Uh, maybe you're the same when you speak to Siri or you speak to Alexa, that you're very polite and you say please and thank you. Um, this is exactly how I'm working with Claude or working with uh, ChatGPT, is to treat them as if they're a junior member of your team. Imagine you had a new associate, a new analyst that joins your team. You're not going to give them a one word uh, uh, you know, request, you know, give me the breakdown of X or Y you're going to provide them with very uh, staggered instructions. First, I want you to do this. Second, I want you to do that. Third, I'd like you to take what you've done and then I'd like you to do this. And so this is exactly how you should be crafting your prompts. Uh, it's a new skill and it's something that we can all uh, do better and better at. And it's something that I spend a lot of my time on. Treat it like a human, explain what their role is, and explain in bite-sized steps uh, how you'd like them to help you. The third rule is, uh, sorry, the fourth rule, I should say, is to assume that the AI you're using today is the worst you're ever going to use. You know, we're seeing this with the pace of innovation, with new models from Llama, uh, new expected GPT-5 coming out from ChatGPT, 
uh, Claude 3.5, they're just continuing to get better and better and better. So even as you're starting to use these AI models and you're finding a bit of hallucination or some poor training data or just some errors, just assume that this is the worst it's ever going to be and think in three or four years' time what this could be. It's going to help you to, as you're designing business processes or redefining business processes, to rethink what it means to develop a process and how you're going to use people versus using technology and the machines to support you. So that's the first uh, section of the book, uh, these four rules, inviting AI every single time you're doing any work. Number two, to take it with a pinch of salt and be the human in the loop. And number three, to talk to AI like it's a person and really step it through what you want it to do. And the fourth, just to assume that this is the worst AI you're ever going to use. The second half of the book really goes through some specific use cases and Ethan dives deeper into how uh, you can start to use AI and how it's going to structure and engage with different parts of our world. Um, he talks through AI as a person. You know, what does it mean for AI to be intelligent or to have emotions or to be sentient? Uh, he talks through what's it like to have AI as a creator if you work in marketing or music and you're creating or an author and you're creating this content. How can you use that to support your workflow? He talks through AI as a co-worker. What is it like for every individual to suddenly have a whole series of co-workers that can support them? I'll give you a specific example. Uh, in Claude, uh, which is uh, Anthropic's uh, chat model, uh, you can create projects. And each project you can seed with specific bits of information or knowledge or documents to provide context to all of your prompts. I've set up individual projects for individual roles within my organization. I don't have a CMO, but I have created a CMO in Claude and I've provided it with some of the best content and analysis that I've got about what makes a great marketing function. And now when I go and ask uh, the CMO um, uh, agent in Claude, I'm getting much uh, better responses. I also have one for sales. I also have one for finance. It's really helping me to guide some of the ways that I work with AI. What we're seeing, and Ethan dives into some of this in the book, is that in knowledge intensive roles, so think consultants, uh, any professional services, think anyone working in legal or accounts, business analysis, these kind of roles are being truly disrupted where uh, individual humans are becoming 40, 50, 60 percent more productive by supporting themselves with these agents. Uh, and then finally, he goes into talking about uh, AI for tutoring uh, and schools and AI for coaching. And really, we're seeing a complete disruption of the way that education works. Uh, typically, it used to be that in the lesson itself is where you had one way delivery, the teacher delivered information to you. And then you went back home and you did some homework or prep, which is where you did your critical thinking and you reinforced that messaging. What we've seen is that in schools and universities, there is near universal adoption of chat GPT and other AI models. If you give students a task, that task is pretty much being copied word for word straight into an AI model. And then what comes back out of the AI model is being provided word for word back uh, to the tutor. And teachers are seeing this. Uh, prep and homework is coming back in and it all looks pretty much identical. The students themselves have not done any of that critical thinking. So Ethan talks through a complete flip of that model. Maybe in the future, actually, uh, students will be tasked with using AI to uh, not necessarily answer a question, but to critically think through what the AI has suggested as part of their homework. And then in the lessons themselves, that's not where the delivery happens. That's where the reinforcement and the practical exercises and the examination happens. So a really interesting book. Uh, I definitely recommend it. It's a relatively quick read. 
Um, but it's going to open your eyes, uh, not just to how you can use AI in the workplace, but also how it's going to transform the way that you work uh, you know, outside with your family, friends and relationships.